Welcome to the Nadbaniel Method for Healthy Backs Introductory Program, Lesson 5B, which is a continuation of 5A. Please lie on your back for a moment and scan the way you are lying on the floor, how you are breathing, the contact of your back and the back of your pelvis with the floor, the way the legs are lying on the floor, and now let's just review a few movements from lesson 5a. Please roll to lie on your left side, bend your knees, put your head on your left arm and get a hold of your left temple with your right hand with the right arm from above the head. Very gently lift the head and lower it and feel whether you can bring into the movement what you've learned in Lesson 5a. That means lengthen the spine, let the right side of your ribcage get shorter, let the left side get longer, maybe breathe out to help soften the chest, and now lift the head, leave it up in the air a little bit, and very gently Move the head forward, bend it forward, and then take it backwards. And feel whether you can allow the stomach to contract, and feel whether you can allow the abdomen muscles to contract and the back to round when the head moves forward. And then when you take the head backwards, whether you can feel the lower back arching and the abdomen getting free and pushing out. And just do this movement a few times very gently. And stop it. Roll on your back. Rest for a moment. Feel the changes in the way you're lying on the floor. Compare the right side to the left side. And now roll to lie on your right side. And Bend your knees, put them one on top of the other. Get hold with your left hand, your right temple. Have the right arm under your head. Make sure that the palm of your right hand is turned upwards towards the ceiling. And again, lift the head and lower it gently. And while you lift and lower the head, resume the bell-like movement where you move the fingers towards one another and then extremely gently open the fingers and do this movement gently without interruption while you lift the head and lower it. Make sure that you breathe freely without interruption and feel the kind of calm and delicacy that is needed in order to be able to do this movement with the hand while lifting and lowering the head. And stop it. Slowly roll to lie on your back and rest for a moment. And now please roll to lie on your left side again. Bend the legs. Get a hold of your left temple with your right hand. And this time lengthen the right leg down and very gently lift the head and lift the leg at the same time a few times and then lower them of course lift the head and the leg and lower the head and the leg and here too resume doing the bell like movement with your left hand lift the head and the leg a little bit and move them a little forward, allowing the back to round, and then come back. And do this movement gently so that you can do the movement of the left palm and fingers without interruption. Slowly roll to lie on your back and rest, please. And roll to lie on your right side again. Bend one leg on top of the other. Place your right hand under your head or in front of you. 
get hold with your left hand, your right temple, with the left forearm above the head. And now lift your head and instead of moving it forward, this time with the help of the arm, take the head backwards, move the back of the head backwards. Make sure that you're not rotating your head and turning your face towards the ceiling, but that you are taking the back of the head backwards and that your left ear is parallel to the floor. Many people turn their head instead of taking it backwards and that is because they do not arch the back and as a result what's left for them is to turn the chest. So make sure that you're taking the head backwards even if it's a tiny incy wincy little movement and see whether arching the back helps you do the movement just like what you did in the previous lesson sitting in a chair. When you wanted to look up, you rolled your pelvis forward. You lifted the chest up in front of the chest. Leave this alone, lie on your back and rest for a moment. And again, observe the differences both between the sides and in the way you're lying and in the way you're feeling. Roll again to lie on the right side, just like last time. Bend the legs one on top of the other. Get hold with your left hand, your right temple. Make sure you're lying on the side. And now lengthen the left leg down as you've been doing and now lift the head and the leg in the air a little and take the heel backwards the leg backwards and at the same time the back of the head backwards as if the back of the head wants to see your heel if you had an eye on the back of your head you would be able to see your left heel and notice, what is your pelvis doing? Is it rolling backwards or is it rolling forwards? For a moment, take the leg and the head forward, like you've done in the previous movement variation. Take the leg and the head forward and you see the pelvis tends to roll backwards towards lying on the back of the pelvis. So now, when you take the head backwards and the leg backwards, let the pelvis roll forward. Don't take the leg and head forward anymore. I asked you to do it just once, so you can feel the difference. Lift the head and the leg and move them backwards towards one another and then come back to the middle and put the head and leg down. And each time you do it, see if you can use your back and your pelvis a little clearer to help the head and leg move behind. If you ever watch an ice skater lift her leg behind her up in the air, you'll see how far forward she's rolling, moving her pelvis and how high up she's lifting her chest. If you look at the dancer doing this movement, they do the same thing. You have to free your abdomen Remember, maybe do one movement, pull your belly in and hold it in, pull your belly in tight and hold your belly tight and then lift the head and leg and uh, you see, it's a torture to try to do it. So next time, lift your head and leg and roll the pelvis forward, free the abdomen and lift the chest up and see what happens. And roll to lie on your back and rest for a moment. And feel the dramatic changes that occur from doing this movement. The total reorganization that happens in the body. The total reorganization of a sense of self, a sense of wholeness that starts coming onto one. 
and roll to lie on your left side. Bend one leg on top of the other. Get hold of your left temple with your right hand and first just lift the head and take the back of the head backwards and then bring it back to place. And again remember in order to take the back backwards what do you need to do with your lower back, with your belly, with your pelvis, with your chest? Wake up to yourself. Make sure that every time you take the back of the head backwards that you are freeing your abdomen that you're letting your back arch, that you're letting your pelvis roll a little forward. And now resume the bell movement with your left hand. And once you've established that movement, continue doing the bell movement and lift your head and take the back of the head backwards without interrupting with the movement or the quality of the movement of the hand. See how you need to slow down greatly and you need to reduce the force with which you do the movement in order to maintain a continuous, gentle quality of bell movement in your left hand. And put the head down for one second, but keep holding it. And lengthen your right leg down. And now, lift the head and the leg and take the back of the head backwards. Take the heel and the leg backwards and come back. And again, remember, let your belly get free. Maybe even push the belly out and arch your back and let the pelvis roll forward. The pelvis needs to roll over the hip you're lying on, which is in this case your left hip. And the right hip rolls forward as you take your leg and the back of your head backwards. And see if you can add to that the bell movement. There you go. Leave this alone. Slowly roll to lie on your back and rest for a moment. And roll again to lie on your right side. Bend the legs. Get a hold with your left hand, your right temple. Lengthen your left leg down. And now lift the head and the leg a little up in the air. And combine the two movements. That means you take the head and the leg forward and you let the back round and the pelvis roll a little backwards and then take the back of the head and the heel backwards and roll the pelvis forward and arch your back and lift your chest and feel the amount of movement that happens in the center of yourself while you're moving the head and the leg. and see whether you have the tendency to take the pelvis backwards both times, both when you go forward and backwards, and gradually figure out how to use your back muscles in helping you take the leg and the head backwards. That means the pelvis will roll forwards and the belly will become full. And then you bring the head and leg forward the belly gets pulled in and the pelvis rolls backwards. This is excellent. And see if you can do one or two movements as you do the bell movement 
with your right hand. See that that immediately changes the quality with which you do the movement. It's not a simple challenge. Roll to lie on your back and rest for a moment. Doing the bell movement with your hand while you're moving your head or your head and leg is a much greater challenge than moving the head and the leg. Here we're starting to access in a very powerful way the quality with which you do the movement. And that places a very large, big demand on the brain, on your consciousness, on your intentionality. You no longer can move in an automatic fashion. And it also opens remarkable possibilities for achievement in movement, in quality of movement, in freedom, and the freedom from pain, of course. And roll to lie on your left side. Bend your legs one on top of the other. Get hold this time with your right hand, your left temple. Lengthen your right leg down. Establish the bell movement with your left hand. And once that movement is established and you can really feel it, lift your leg and your head and move them both forward and backwards. And you'll see that those moments when you stop moving the hand or you change the quality with which you move the hand into harder, stiffer quality, these are moments where you do not move your chest and your back and your abdomen in a way to help your head and leg. Anytime you stop the hand movement, that means you have stopped the movement in your ribs and in your spine. It means you're holding your breath. And anytime the hand moves continuously and freely, it means that your leg, head, arm and back are all moving beautifully. And you are pain free at that moment or even second. And roll to lie on your back and rest for a moment. And again, please roll to lie on your right side with the right leg bent, the left leg long. Get hold with your left hand, your right temple. And lift the right leg and head in the air. And this time we'll do something a little different. When you move your head forward, take your heel and leg backwards. You can do a tiny little movement. And when you move your leg forwards, take the head backwards. And do it as if you have swallowed a stick that goes from your head through your back to your left heel. So when you move the head forward, to the same extent the leg needs to move backwards. And when you move the leg forwards, to the same extent the back has to move forwards. So the whole movement is done over the right hip joint. If you feel any tenderness or any discomfort or any fatigue in the muscles, just take as many rests as you need. And now roll to lie on your left side and do the same movement on this side. So you get hold of your head, of your left temple with your right hand and you lengthen your right leg, your left knee is bent and when you take the head forward, you take the leg backwards. And when you take the head backwards, you take the leg forward. And if you're up to it, establish the bell movement as you do the movement with the head and the leg. Please roll to lie on your back and rest.
feel which parts of yourself are lying flatter to the floor. Do you feel more calm, more peaceful? Is the breathing softer but fuller? And roll again to line your right side, please. Bend the knees one on top of the other. The legs are one on top of the other. Get hold of your right temple with your left hand. And now lift your head up. And then in a circular movement, move it forward. And then down, but not all the way to the floor. And then back. That means we add all the movements we've done and you're drawing a circle with the top of your head. But make sure that you're holding the temple, not behind the head and not in front of the head, but the real side of the head. And lift the head and then bring it forward and down and backwards and up. And as you do this movement, Listen to your chest, to your ribs, to your spine. Do you feel movement there? Lots of little movements all the time that allow the head to move smoothly, to respond to the arm without being pulled, without being pulled on the neck. Do you feel that the pelvis is also doing a circle? at the same time that the head is doing a circle. Are there parts where the pelvis doesn't move? And when the pelvis doesn't move, what happens to the movement of the head and to the circle? Does it stop being a circle? And stop for one second on your side, don't go to your back, and again, lift the head, And this time, lift the head, take it backwards and downwards and forwards and upwards. That means make circles with the top of your head in the opposite direction. And see if you can make a tiny but luxurious circle where every vertebrae in your spine, every rib in your back, your belly and your lower back muscles know that you're moving your head and participate. Can you feel your pelvis doing a circle? And slowly roll to lie on the other side. Bend the legs one on top of the other. Get a hold of your left temple with your right hand and lift the head and then move it forward and down and backwards and up and do circles in this direction. And again, take your time and establish the bell movement and listen to the ribs and the pelvis and the belly and the lower back. And now change the direction of the circle. And that's very good. Roll to lie on your back and rest for a moment. And once again, roll to lie on your right side. Bend your right leg, but have the left leg long down in continuation of the spine. Get hold of your right temple with your left hand. And this time lift the leg and the head up. Then take both of them forward and down and backwards and up. That means you're doing circles with your heel, with your leg, with your foot, and with the top of your head at the same time. And see if you can let again the chest and the pelvis move so when the head and foot are forward the pelvis is rolled back and then it starts rolling forward and then it rolls up a little towards the head and down 
That's very, very good. And the more you let your ribs be free to move, you'll get both flexibility and strength. When the ribs are rigid, then you can't use your back muscles fully. You stop yourself from using your full power and your full mobility. That's very, very nice. And change over the direction of the circle. You can stop for one second and then you lift the head and the leg and then start taking the head and leg backwards and then downwards. And maybe not the first time around, but when you come back to this lesson and you get more familiar with it, you can continuously do the bell movement throughout all the variations. Right now, if it is too much to do at once, you don't have to do the bell movement. But make sure to do this lesson enough times so that you can bring in the bell movement and roll on your back and rest for a moment. And of course, you can use the bell movement in any other movement you do to make sure you're doing it in that kind of quality we've been talking about. And roll to lie on your left side. Bend your left knee. Have the right leg long. Get hold with your left hand, your right temple. And now lift the leg and the head in the air and do two, three circles in one direction and then do two, three circles in the other direction. Notice again whether you know how to use your lower back and use your abdomen muscles and use your pelvis to help you move both the leg and the head and roll on your back and rest please. Once more, roll to lie on your right side the legs bent one on top of the other. Please get hold with your left hand, your right temple, and simply do the initial movement of the lesson. Lift the head on the side like this and lower it, and feel what it's like now. Feel if the head lifts more, but more important than that, feel how you're lifting your head. Feel how the muscles connecting the chest, the ribs to the pelvis are working now so that when you lift the head, your left hip rolls up towards your left ear. The whole left side gets shorter and the back arches a little bit, which means that your spine gets longer. And leave this alone. Roll to lie on the other side. Bend the legs one on top of the other. And again, lift and lower the head and feel what it's like on this side now. Now, when you're lifting the head, is it you lifting the head rather than pulling on the head as if it was not part of your whole self? Right now, you're moving the head and the head is just one element in the puzzle. Feel what your pelvis is doing, your chest is doing, your lower back. What's happening in your knees, in your ankles? You'll see that there isn't a part of the body that should be left out of the picture. And now leave this alone. Roll to lie on your back just for a few seconds to feel how you're lying and how you're breathing and slowly roll to your side and sit up and stand up and notice the changes both in standing and in walking. Feel where your shoulders are now. 
are they even lower than before during the previous lessons? That means more unnecessary contractions have left the shoulder area, the neck, the back area. Is your abdomen a bit freer? Can you breathe easier? Walk around and feel what your hips feel like now. Now that you've finished the fifth lesson, there is a lot that you have felt, experienced, and understand about yourself and about how your back can and needs to move and work. So look for opportunities to bring this new and superior way of moving into your daily activities. It can be as simple as reaching up to take something off a shelf. Try it right now. Reach up with any one of your arms and see if you can let the lower back help you. See what it's like. You need to look up. Remember what it takes. can be bending down to tie a shoe. can be playing a game of golf. You'll see that when you learn how to use the center of your body so you can both arch your back and twist it, how playing golf can change dramatically. It can be walking, it can be playing tennis, it can be dancing, it can be lovemaking, it can be anything you like to do. Thank you again for participating with me in this lesson. And I'm looking forward to having you with me again on our sixth and final lesson of this program soon. Congratulations on completing this lesson. To continue to improve powerfully, it is important to practice the lessons of the program in their order at least once every two to three days. When you complete all the lessons in this program, start again at the beginning with lesson number one. You may also want to look for group lessons in your area, or you may want to seek out a practitioner for one-on-one -on -one work. You can find information about other tapes, seminars, and Anat Banyal Method practitioners on our website at method dot com or call one eight hundred three eight six one four four one. We encourage you to continue the lessons so you will enjoy the amazing progress shared by other back pain sufferers and by those looking to improve the power and flexibility of their back and gain great freedom and vitality in their life.